So I was going to film like a nice intro to this video, um, but that's not happening because I postponed editing it too long and I don't have time to get ready to do that. So here is my attempt at a very cheap Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, the total ended up being this much and with the addition of a stuffing box and cranberry sauce from the store. It's this much. There are certain things that I'm going to assume you have, such as butter, milk, and flour, along with some basic herbs and salt and pepper. But other than that, everything is included in the price. So yeah, let's go. I'm gonna film this over the course of a few days because uh, eating a whole Thanksgiving dinner in one day right before Thanksgiving is not a good idea. Uh, and I already, I already prepped the chicken, but I'm gonna give you a little tour of what I do to make it taste like a turkey and just generally better than regular roast chicken. So it's just a regular like $5 chicken with about a teaspoon each of um, pepper, garlic powder, sage, or thyme, and then half that much sage and twice that much salt. And then you have to rub it all over the chicken, but the secret to getting that crispy skin is, I only have one hand so this might be a bit messy, to separate the skin from the meat where you can, which is back here, I know this is gross, which is back here underneath the skin on the thighs. And also on the breasts. And this gives you fat on both sides of the skin there, which will not only fry up the skin real nice, tasty, and crunchy, but better season the meat that's underneath it. So that's that's my my trick for that. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees, 325 if it's convection. Like mine is. I have a bit of root vegetables, just carrots and onions and some celery because I thought it looked a bit bland. But other root vegetables like turnips will work great for this too. This is a really easy way to get another side <laughs> and it uh, it really helps with the gravy too. If you don't like mashed potatoes you can add potatoes to this but I'm doing mashed potatoes tonight. And then these have just been tossed with some oil, salt, pepper, sage, thyme, same as the butter on the chicken, because I think that those are the herbs that really make it taste like Thanksgiving. So it's kind of an easy way to hack your way into it. And then we just have the chicken on top. And because I don't want the wings to cook too fast and get dry, I'm keeping them tacked onto the side of the body with toothpicks. It's just through the elbow into the rib cage None of the tasty bits are affected, but that way it's a bit more compact and you don't get those dried out chicken wings because nobody likes a dried out chicken wing. And then into the oven it goes. And then I have a little over two pounds of potatoes that are boiling for the mashed potatoes. Um, about 15 minutes until you can stab them and it, and it goes in easy. Boiled drained potatoes and mashed. I have a potato masher, but a fork, food processor, or even you can let them get cold and just squish them up with your hands if you really wanted to. That all works. And then I'm gonna add some butter and some milk to this. And that should be pretty much done. And then of course, salt and pepper to taste. And maybe a little garlic powder if I'm, if I'm feeling excited. And boom, mashed potatoes. I look gross, but here's a quick little interruption to show you a cooking hack I actually learned in culinary school. So thermometers are expensive. You might not have a meat thermometer if you're making this recipe. So to tell if your chicken is done, or most meats actually, you take your hand and you put your thumb and your, and your uh, pinky finger together. And it, you poke this right here. This is what chicken should feel like when it's done. 
Uh, this is chicken and well done meat. Medium, medium rare, rare. Just, just a fun little trick, thought I'd share. <laughs> I'm going to turn it up to 400 for the last five to 10 minutes so that it gets nice and crispy. Ta-da, there's your chicken. So for the gravy, we're going to do a roux base. And instead of using butter, we're gonna use the chicken fat. So you can just pick it up and lean it and get some of the chicken fat and the chicken drippings out of that. Try and get the brown stuff, that's what's tasty, and add it to the pan. I'm filming with my hand, so I'm going to have to not film that part, but I'll be back. <laughs> so I have some of the chicken fat on medium low heat, and I'm going to add flour all purpose and stir it in until it makes a nice paste. You can just eyeball it, but you want roughly equal amounts. I'm gonna add more. And then you're going to cook that for three to five minutes so that it gets nice and gelatinized. All right, we have our roux nice and gelatinized and cooked. It might be a little too cooked, but it's whatever. So what we're gonna do is come over here, open our chicken stock, add some chicken stock, And mix the roux in. So what we're making is mostly a gravy. Um, I don't think it's the traditional method, but I could be wrong. What I know this as is a velouté. It's one of the five mother sauces, except instead of butter, like the French would use, we're doing the fat from our chicken. Because that sounded tasty. And sometimes the French are boring. So you're just going to keep adding small amounts of chicken stock and mixing it in until you get the gravy that you want. And I will cut back to that in just a second. And there is your finished gravy. Manna. Manna. Skin review. Mm. That's good. That's good? It's crispy enough? Well seasoned? Mm -hmm. Okay, you can can you leave some for everyone else? No. <laughs> I think this I think the skin review is positive. Yeah. It is day two of the Woo! Budget Thanksgiving thing that I'm doing. It is Raining outside. Wait, hold on. <laughs> yeah, baby. That's the shit. Uh, and uh, this is going to be a little more disjointed. Because I started making chicken soup with the leftover chicken carcass. And I realized I should be filming that. So that's what we're going to do now. It's, there's, there's a little bit missing. Uh, <sighs> All right, next up on our Thanksgiving journey, we are going to turn this box mac and cheese into the Thanksgiving baked mac and cheese side dish of your dreams, hopefully. I mean, am I not live? I'm, I'm gonna do my best. Pasta in boiling water. You know how to cook pasta. We're doing this part basic. Oh, it's salted water. That's important. Last time, baby, we got two tablespoons, roughly, of butter. And we're gonna add a roughly equal amount of flour and stir there into a nice paste. And then we're gonna stir it for a few minutes until it gelatinizes real nice. You may remember this from the gravy. 
All right, now that we've got it nice and cooked, we're going to add some milk. And stir it up. until it thickens. There we go. There we go. Nice and thick. I'm going to add a little more and thicken it again. Now we're going to take this very basic, roughly bechamel-ish base, and we're going to add cheese packet. mix it up. Oop. Mix it up all nice and smooth. All right, here's where it starts to get fancy. We've got about a cup of shredded cheese. I'm using cheddar, but it's up to you what you use. I shredded my own, but you can easily use pre-shredded cheese. Then we're just going to take that and add it to our regular cheese sauce. I have tried doing this without the added step of the flour, but I have found that um, the extra oil from the cheese breaks the sauce a bit and it's just not as good. So this is gonna need a bit more milk. Okay, we've got a little more milk or shredded cheese in with the previously concocted cheese mixture from the box. And we're just going to melt the cheese until it's a nice smooth sauce. And there we go. Doesn't it look a little bit gooier than your normal boxed mac and cheese? All right, and then I just poured that into a casserole dish and put some extra shredded cheese on top. Now, if I were cooking this for a large meal, I would probably double this recipe, but since it's just me, one box is good enough. So I'm gonna put this in the oven at 350 until the top gets all brown and bubbly. I'll put a little thing on screen here with how long that ends up taking. It's been about 15 minutes. It should be thoroughly baked, so I'm going to turn it up to broil just for a minute or two to get the top crispy. Hold on. So over here, I have, ignore the mess of my camera. I've taken off all the leftover chicken meat and I have the, the leftover bones and carcass covered with water with some, about two carrots, two ribs of celery and one onion. I also used the leftover vegetables that I did underneath it because they're the same thing and no one was eating those. And I have um, half a head of garlic, a tablespoon of black peppercorns or just pepper, and some thyme leaves. Onion! Woo! Garlic powder! Celery and carrots! Broth and chicken! The noodles are in. Ta-da! Just gonna let them cook for a few minutes. Turn it off and it should be done.